For the next 10 years, a portion of the money is going to come from the state trust lands, the permanent trust, and that'll be about 59% of the total cost. The remainder of the money will come out of the state general fund, and that's about 41% of the total amount of money. That'll change a little bit each year, but on average, it'll be 59% trust monies and 41% state general fund monies over that 10-year period of time. It's probably easier for districts to look at the amount per pupil. It's be about $270 per pupil. Uh, so uh, take the number of pupils that are in a district and it doesn't, no, you don't have to worry about weighted student count, just total population and it'll average out about $270 additional monies in the first year. That includes some money that the legislature is already distributing. If the ballot uh, initiative passes in May, the school districts will start being allowed to revise their budgets for this year the school 15-16 school year, and they will have some of that money before the school year ends on June 30th. This is exactly what the trust fund was meant to be spent on. It's education. It doesn't do us much good just sitting in a bank somewhere. Uh, and the idea is not just to see how large we can grow that fund. Uh, education has needs right now. Um, we need to get the inflation funding requirement satisfied. And this is a, um, a, a ready pool of funds that is specifically dedicated to education. It can't be spent on anything else. Uh, so it was a natural to look to the trust fund to fund um, at least a majority of the inflation funding requirement. We looked at the impacts on the trust fund over the 10-year uh, horizon that's identified in the uh, resolution that voters are going to uh, be asked to approve. Uh, if, you, if you look at it um, over 10 years, it, without the settlement, the balance in the trust fund would be nine to $10 billion. With uh, the settlement, the balance is gonna be six to $7 billion. So it's gonna be larger than what we have today uh, under the settlement scenario that we agreed to. So it is, uh, it's not as if the trust fund is going away. There's gonna be billions of dollars in the trust fund at the end of the 10 years. It's important for everyone to understand that the trust land's revenue stream lasts for 10 years. After the 10 year period, inflation is protected in the Constitution forever and it compounds annually. Well, it's really exciting that we've come to an agreement with the inflation settlement and the bill was passed at the legislature and now we're ready for step two, which is at the ballot. So May 17th, we'll have a special election for the voters to ratify what the plaintiff groups and the legislature um, approved back last month. It's a quick timeline. You know, it seems May is far away, but actually it's quite quick. If voters choose not to ratify the agreement between the plaintiffs and the legislature, there's two scenarios. Uh, the first is we go back to litigation, but that litigation would take about three to five years which a with a loss of over a billion dollars to our public school kids as well as to our staff. If we are successful, then we go back to right where we started. We have to negotiate with the legislature because they're the ones that appropriate. All a court can do is to say whether the lawsuit is successful or not. So that's, that's one option. The second option is that if it were to fail, then we're in the situation of having zero dollars to our schools, of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on litigation with nothing flowing to kids or to teachers. From this point on, the decision is in the hands of community leaders, education advocates, the business community, and voters. Between now and May, we'll be working to make sure that they have the factual information they need to make this important decision on behalf of students and teachers in classrooms throughout the state.